everyone. Welcome again to our webinar program. This is the eighth webinar of our webinar series 2019. The topic of our webinar today is Action Research for Educators. We are going to learn three talking points. These are what is action research for educators? What is the action research process? And how do educators get started with action research? At some point, teachers will come across some forms of problem that they would like to address in their classroom or in their course. Teachers use different ways to address these problems. Some teachers will rely on traditional ways to solve these problems. Some teachers will seek out the advice of experts to try addressing these challenges. And some teachers will conduct their own investigations to identify and solve problems while analyzing information about their school and the learning environment through action research. This brings us to our first talking point. What is action research for educators? In general, action research is a process of systematic reflection, inquiry and action carried out by individuals about their own practice. Action research is a term used to describe professionals studying their own practice in order to improve it. Action research is an inquiry into one's practice carried out by a person doing the practice so that he can use the data to improve his future practice. Action research is the essence of the professional process of learning through data. In education, action research is an inquiry which is carried out in order to understand, evaluate, and then change in order to improve some educational practices. When applied to teaching, Action research involves gathering and interpreting data to better understand an aspect of teaching and learning and applying the outcomes to improve the practice. Examples of aspects of teaching practices are teaching strategies, methods and techniques, teaching materials, skill building activities or class activities, student assessment, classroom management, and others. Examples of aspects of student learning are absenteeism, tardiness, students' behavior in the class, poor reading ability, poor writing skills, poor mathematical skills, study habits, poor academic performance, and others. Action research is a disciplined inquiry utilized by teachers, instructors, and supervisors to improve the practices to enhance teaching and learning. This leads us to the second talking point. What is the action research process? I'm going to share with you seven steps of action research. This is a complete cycle of action research. However, these steps can be reduced to fewer steps depending on the focus of the study. These are the seven steps. One, selecting a focus. Two, clarifying theories. Three, formulating research questions. Four, collecting data. 5. Analyzing data 6. Reporting results and 7. 
taking informed action. Step one, selecting the focus. Selecting a focus begins with a teacher researcher asking, what elements of my practice do I wish to improve? If my practice is teaching, then what do I worry about my teaching? Is it the way I teach? Teaching materials? My voice? Teaching techniques that I want to improve? What aspect of student learning do I wish to improve? If my worry is about student learning, what do I worry about? Is it classroom behavior or writing skills that I want to improve? Selection of an appropriate research topic should meet three criteria. One, the research topic involves an issue within the scope of the researcher's authority, such as teaching, learning, and educational leadership, not a dean, library, or team. Two, the research topic addresses a matter that the teacher is personally and passionately concerned about, such as teaching strategy, student assessment, student's behavior, student's academic performance, and the like. And three, the research topic involves a matter that will lead to improvement of schools, teaching, and learning. For example, you decide to focus on student's behavior in the class. Then, your research topic is student's behavior in the class. Now that you have selected the topic, you will proceed to step two. Step two, clarifying theories. The second step involves identifying the values, beliefs, and theoretical perspectives the researcher holds relating to his or her focus. For example, assuming that your research topic is student's behavior in the class, you're going to specify what is your concern about student's behavior. If you are concerned about increasing responsible behavior in the class, it will be helpful for you to begin by clarifying which approach you feel will work best in helping students acquire responsible classroom behavior habits such as follows. Using punishments and rewards, allowing students to experience the natural consequences of their behaviors or some other strategy. In clarifying the theory of responsible behavior of the students in the class, review the research and literature to identify the values, beliefs, and theoretical perspectives and effective strategies and practices related to the selected focus, responsible behavior of the students in the class for the action research project. Once you have obtained sufficient data about responsible behavior of the students in the class, proceed to step three. Step three, formulating research questions. Once a focus area has been selected and the researchers' perspectives and beliefs about that focus have been clarified, the next step is to generate a set of personally meaningful research questions to guide the inquiry. Research questions spell out the goal of the study. Example, the research topic is students' behavior in the class. You can formulate three research questions as follows. One, what is the behavior of my students in the class? Two, to what extent could the behavior of my students in the class affect my teaching and the learning of the students? And three, 
how could students' behavior be improved to enhance teaching and learning in the class? You notice that the third research question is the main question of the study. When your research questions are already in place, you are ready to move to step four. Step four, collecting data. General guideline, keep in mind your research questions while collecting the data. And collect data that answer each research question substantially. What should you do first? Look for data where it already exists. Then, consider various types of data to ensure a comprehensive view of what currently exists, such as observation checklists, video, tape record, and others. Some sources of data are student records, teacher reports, test or assessment data, anecdotal data, and observational data. Methods of data collection are questionnaire, and review, focus group interview, focus group discussion, observation, and document review. In data collection, Respect confidentiality and individual privacy as appropriate. Assuming that you already have obtained the substantial data for each research question, then proceed to step five. Step five, analyzing data. Before analyzing the data, Organize the findings according to research questions. During this portion of the seven-step process, teacher-researcher will systematically sort, classify, rank, and examine his or her data to answer each research question with two generic questions as follows. What is the story? embedded in my data? What factors significantly influence this study? By answering these two questions, the teacher-researcher can acquire a better understanding of the phenomenon under investigation and as a result can end up producing grounded theory regarding what might be done to improve the situation, such as improved responsible behavior of the students in the class. This would lead us to step six. Step six, reporting results. The result of the action research must be shared among your peers. In this way, your actual research becomes a source of knowledge. The reporting of action research most often occurs in informal settings that are far less intimidating than the venues where scholarly research has traditionally been shared. Faculty meetings, seminars, and teacher conferences are among the most common venues for sharing action research with peers. Parts of the action research report. Two major parts, one is executive summary and the other one is narrative report. What is an executive summary? An executive summary summarizes a longer report in such a way that readers can rapidly become acquainted with a large body of material without having to read it all. What is a narrative report? A narrative report connects the data presented, presented by section, 
in a sequence of written words. It consists of the following problem statement, research questions, methodology, relevant research and literature, list of findings and conclusions, action plan for improvement of practice. Presentation of data may be included in narrative or appendices. Regardless of which venue or technique educators select for reporting on research, the simple knowledge that they are making a contribution to a collective knowledge base regarding teaching and learning frequently proves to be among the most rewarding aspects of action research. Let's move to step seven, the last step of action research which is the purpose of conducting action research. Step seven, taking informed action. Taking informed action or action planning is very familiar to most teachers. When teachers write lesson plans or develop academic programs, they're engaged in the action planning process. Given what I know now, what should I do? Develop an action plan to improve responsible behavior of your students in the class based on your data analysis, the findings and conclusions upon which you can base actions. Now we will proceed to our last talking point. How do educators get started with research action in the classroom? I will be giving you fewer steps. You can start with a problem. What are your main day-to-day -day concerns? Student absenteeism, poor reading comprehension, poor mathematical skills. What keeps you up at night? Students' behavior, poor relationship with colleagues, poor relationship with students, now you move to the next step. Suppose you pick up poor reading comprehension skills of your students. You want to improve their reading comprehension skills. With that in mind, you will formulate research questions. A well-crafted research question clarifies the thin slice that you will investigate. It relates the action you will take to the, to the outcome you are interested in measuring. Here are some examples of research questions. How could students' behavior be improved to enhance teaching and learning in the class? How can project-based learning be structured to promote student engagement? How to increase efforts to include student voice and choice in professional learning plans influence satisfaction with the PLT process. Those are some samples of research questions. Now we move to the third step, the data collection. Your bread and butter data will often come from your students. As mentioned in the previous slides, consider all of the ways you can get the data, like surveys, via Google Forms or other platforms, interviews, focus groups, reflections, portfolios, or personal learning labs, discussions, and others. If possible, try to get three or more data sources so that you can cross-check your conclusions across multiple perspectives. Fourth step, data analysis. Action research involves an intricate web of interpretation. Approach your data collection in a systematic way so that, in the end, you can look for patterns through the lens of your research questions. The rule of thumb is called triangulation, and it is the way that action researchers make their findings as valid as possible. And the last step, action plan. 
develop an action plan to improve that practice of teaching and learning based on your data analysis, the findings and conclusions upon which you can base actions. I would like to share with you some final tips. A few things to keep in mind as you embark on this journey. One, course corrections are okay. Like teaching, you may start with a plan and find you need to adapt to emerging circumstances and insights. Data collection plans often change as information starts to flow in. But you can alter your research question as your investigative focus shifts. It is your story. And get a buddy. At minimum, find a mentor or a colleague that you can periodically share ideas as the research advances. And share the wealth. The act of packaging your study for sharing is an important part of the process. It forces you to distill your new found knowledge and provides caution. You can share within your school, online, or in a public forum. We have just finished our webinar 8, Action Research for Educators. I would like to reiterate key points of our webinar session today as follows. The purpose of Action Research for Educators is to identify the specific practices of teaching and learning that affect students' performance and improve these practices based on the findings. The action to improve the practice is data-based. Then, we discuss the seven steps to conduct action research to encourage to conduct action research too. The steps are easy to follow. They are selecting a focus, qualifying theories, formulating research questions, collecting data, analyzing data, reporting results, and taking informed action. And finally, the fewer steps on how to get started with action research. I hope you learned something from our webinar today to continue conducting your action research. And for those who have the drive, to conduct action research, I encourage you to start and make a difference. I officially close our webinar 8, Action Research for Educators. See you soon in our webinar 9, Building Self-Management at Work. Thank you for joining us.